There are three historic buildings in downtown Jacksonville that have been in need of restoration for nearly 30 years. They are known as the Lara Street Trio. This is the story of why they're important and why they must be saved. On May the 3rd, 1901, the Great Fire of Jacksonville destroyed 90% of downtown in a single afternoon. The glow of the flames could be seen in the sky as far away as Savannah in Miami. An area of over two square miles was laid waste. 2,368 buildings were destroyed. It was the second largest city fire in the history of the United States at that time. Newspapers across the country carried the news of Jacksonville's destruction. A 28-year-old New York architect named Henry John Clutho read the headline in the New York Times and vowed to go to Jacksonville to help rebuild the city. Clutho was trained in the neoclassical style, which followed the formal tradition of ancient Greek columns and Roman arches. It was known as Beaux-Arts. Within two months after the fire, Clutho had moved to Jacksonville and began selling his talents to the city's leaders. He designed mansions for Jacksonville's movers and shakers. He landed major commissions such as Jacksonville's new city hall and the public library and even the governor's mansion. All of these were in the traditional neoclassical Beaux-Arts style. In 1904, Clutho married a Jacksonville beauty, Elizabeth Wicker, and they went to Niagara Falls on their honeymoon. While there, Clutho heard about a progressive young architect who was building two extraordinary buildings in nearby Buffalo, New York. Clutho went by to visit this architect, whose name was Frank Lloyd Wright. The two architects hit it off well, and became friends, and Wright showed Clutho his buildings that were under construction there in Buffalo, and he also took him to visit a beautiful skyscraper, the Guarantee Building, that was designed by Louis Sullivan, who was Frank Lloyd Wright's teacher and mentor. Frank Lloyd Wright would later become the most famous architect that ever lived, but Louis Sullivan was perhaps the greatest architect of all time. He inspired an entire generation of American architects. Sullivan is known as the father of the skyscraper. He not only created some of the first tall buildings in Chicago that soared into the sky, but he also developed an organic style of ornament that made his buildings astonishingly beautiful. His buildings were decorated with a rich and sensuous ornamentation derived from natural elements combining geometric shapes with the leaves and berries and seed pods. The decorative elements were made using a new glazed concrete material called terracotta, which could be molded into any intricate shape that the architect could imagine. Although these buildings were made of stone and steel, Sullivan's ornaments softened them and gave them a human scale as well as creating a feast for the eyes. The buildings of Wright and Sullivan were unlike anything Clutho had ever seen. These Midwestern architects were on a mission to establish a new style of architecture that was purely American, rejecting European influences and helping American architecture escape from the pretentiousness of ancient Rome and Greece. This new architectural movement would later be known as the Chicago style and the Prairie style, and it would revolutionize architecture in this country. Clutho was enormously impressed with the work of Sullivan and Wright, and he came home to Jacksonville filled with ideas that would result in his becoming a champion of this new American architectural style. Clutho astonished the conservative Jacksonville populace with the city's first skyscraper. Known as the Bisbee Building, it was built next to the elegant marble bank on Forsyth Street. That's Clutho standing on top of the skyscraper under construction. 
The Bisbee was a narrow, ten-story, reinforced concrete high-rise with large plate-glass windows. It rented out so quickly, even before it was completed, that the owner instructed Clutho to double the width of the building. Completed in 1909, the resulting building still stands on Forsyth Street, twice as wide as originally planned. The Bisbee Building is historically significant as the first skyscraper in the entire state of Florida. In 1910, wealthy department store owners Jacob and Morris Cohen commissioned Clutho to design what would become the ninth biggest department store in the United States. It was named the St. James Building, after the Grand Hotel that formerly stood on this site. The St. James was Clutho's largest commission. It occupies an entire city block and is profusely adorned with rich terracotta reminiscent of the designs of Louis Sullivan. Clutho translated Sullivan's designs into his own personal style, incorporating abstract Florida seashell motifs into the ornate terracotta. The entire exterior is a work of art. In 1997, the building was renovated to become Jacksonville City Hall, and much of the building's decorative features were restored. The St. James is believed to be one of the largest prairie-style buildings in the world, and it is definitely a candidate for the most beautiful city hall in America. Clutho's next building would be a beautifully proportioned, narrow, 11-story skyscraper. His Florida Life building was constructed on Laura Street around the corner from the Bisbee building. The Florida Life building embodied everything that Lewis Sullivan could have wished for when he said, A skyscraper must be tall. It must be every inch a proud and soaring thing, rising in sheer exaltation. The top of the building was crowned with an elaborate burst of Sullivan-esque terracotta, one of the most beautiful sculptural details ever created on a Jacksonville building. Unfortunately, it was removed by a negligent out-of-town owner in 1993, Nations Bank, that mistakenly feared it was about to fall off. Replication and replacement of this crowning architectural element is an absolute necessity, and the current owner has promised to include it in the building's restoration. It must once again be a proud and soaring thing. By themselves, the three buildings that make up the Laura Street Trio are each important historic landmarks, but as a group, they become many, many times more significant. They are a rarity in American architecture. Although not designed by Clutho, the Marble Bank was one of Jacksonville's most beautiful buildings constructed after the Great Fire. Its interior is one of the most beautiful rooms in Jacksonville, and it will make an extraordinary restaurant. Here is the most important thing to remember about the Laura Street Trio. In most American cities, the tallest buildings are located on the corners, and they have less prominent buildings located on either side of them. Thus, usually only the fronts of the adjoining buildings are visible. However, on the corner of Laura and Forsyth, we have a low-rise classical building, the Marble Bank, perfectly framed by two soaring skyscrapers of similar height and proportion, both designed by our greatest architect. This creates a unique architectural composition where the entirety of all three buildings can be seen from a single vantage point. Together they form a grouping that is breathtaking in its symmetry and rare in its composition. Sadly, these three intersecting buildings have been vacant and deteriorating for several decades. They must be saved, and they must be saved as a group. This is Jacksonville's most architecturally significant corner. The restoration of the Laura Street Trio is the city's most urgent preservation project. Clutho designed many other great buildings in the prairie style, all of which were influenced by Wright and Sullivan. 
his buildings were published and recognized nationally as part of this important movement in American architecture. Because of Clutho, Jacksonville has more prairie-style buildings than any other city outside the Midwest. Time passed, and Henry John Clutho was largely forgotten. He died in poverty at age 91 in 1964. He was a true pioneer of American architecture. Since his death, half of his greatest prairie-style buildings have been demolished or remodeled beyond recognition. We cannot recreate our city's heritage once it is gone. Preservation is not easy or inexpensive. The Laura Street Trio is our crown jewel. It's our Picasso. Let's do whatever it takes to save it so that future generations can share one of the great architectural treasures in Jacksonville history.